okay now we go to the next topic okay if you have more questions you can send to me the final judgment is based on our life and our work now um, there is a method of evangelism I don't know if you have heard of it this method of evangelism it will go like this if one day you go to heaven you stand in front of heaven and there is an angel or God in front of uh, the gate to heaven asks you why should I let you come into heaven and uh, the standard answer is I believe in Jesus now this is not the correct answer now we are saved by Jesus dying for us we are saved by trusting in Jesus as our Savior that's true that's the way of salvation but that is not the way of the final judgment when we look at all the final judgment passages we notice that none of the final judgment passage will be like this that God or Jesus asked the person have you believed in me you don't find any passage like that you find that all the passage of final judgment is about their good works about their life so we want to examine this so we're saved by grace through faith how come we are judged by our good works and our life instead of judged by faith so we look at this and uh, find out the answer um, so when we one day we go to heaven God will not only look at our faith our faith is the foundation we're saved by grace through faith that never changes but our faith will always bear fruit our fruit proves that we are saved our fruit our action our life now good works is not just doing good but our whole life our relationship with God proves that we have real faith in God and so the Bible talks about that all these judgment passages is always about how we have lived our life okay now first we are saved by grace through faith not by works that never changes Ephesians 2 8 for it is by grace you have been saved through faith and this is not from yourselves it is the gift of God not by work so that no one can boast for we are uh, God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do so we are saved by grace through faith not from ourselves and not by works we're not saved by ourselves we we no one can be good enough no one can you know come up to the standard of God so it's never by our good works and God made us anew when he saved us so we are saved by grace when we trust in Jesus as our Savior then we are saved and God now here for we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works so we are saved by grace through faith and then we are saved and created by God to become a new creature a new creation that we are prepared to do good works created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do so God save us so that we can do good God save us not just to stay idle and uh, in all the passages we see that it's uh, judgment is always about our life and so God created us so that we can uh, follow God and obey God and serve God and honor God now I use an illustration if you buy a cell phone you expect it to be useful that you can make phone calls or you can use whatsapp and you can see Facebook you can use it for different purposes and then you buy a cell phone and you test it it doesn't work you would take it back to the shop and say I bought this phone and it doesn't work then you will reject it so God saves us to do good to serve God to glorify God and if this person doesn't change at all then there is something wrong because God will always enter a person's life and change his life 
And if the person doesn't change, that means he has not really repented and really trusted in Jesus as his Savior. And he doesn't have a healthy relationship with God. And that's why his life doesn't change. So um, the reason why it doesn't change is not because of God, it's because of him. That he is, uh, doesn't repent of his sin and he doesn't uh, trust in Jesus. And all the by our judgment passages talk about judgment based on our work, life and our works. In all passages of judgment, the people are judged by their life and their works. Never does one passage say that someone can enter heaven because he believes in Jesus. Because faith always bears fruit and the fruit proves that he is saved. So there's no single passage that, that, uh, that God says you can enter heaven because you believe in Jesus. There is no one passage that says that. John 5, 29 Those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of, of condemnation. So if someone has done good, now doing good, it doesn't mean doing good in a society. It means doing good in God's sight, to love God and love people, to glorify God, to serve God, to obey God. So when someone has done good in God's sight, then he will be resurrected to life, eternal life. And those who have done evil in their life, they have not obeyed God. They will be resurrected for condemnation. So this passage is very clear that it's those who do good can have resurrection to eternal life. 2 Corinthians 5.10 For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. So we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Everyone has to face him. And each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Whether he has done good in God's sight, then he will be rewarded. If he's done bad in God's sight, then he will be punished for that. So. Uh, that all judgment passages talk about that. Now, there are some people who separate this judgment seat of Christ and in the white throne of judgment. Actually, the Bible this does not uh, distinguish this. Uh, I, I believe there's only one judgment seat, only one time that we are judged publicly. Everyone in the whole world are judged publicly together. Okay, three, Matthew 25, three. Those who were foolish, the foolish uh, virgins, took their lamps and, lack, and, and uh, took no oil with them. And verse 11, afterwards, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you, the oil can represent spiritual life or the Holy Spirit. Those who don't have a reborn spiritual life or doesn't have the Holy Spirit is not known by Christ. So, um, so if the ten virgins, the foolish one who don't prepare oil, they cannot enter. So they must have the life, the spiritual life of God. And then Matthew 25, actually there are three parables in Matthew 25 about the final judgment. First will be about the ten virgins. And then number two will be the judgment of the talents, the servants with the talents. And then the third one is the judgment of the sheep and the lamb, separation of the sheep and the lamb. Now this is the second parable. Uh, Matthew 25, 16. Then he who had received the five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. Verse 18, But he who had received one talent went and dug it, dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. So he who had received five talents came and brought five more, five other talents. 21, His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You are faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. So this servant who has earned five more talents, then 
the Lord praised him and said, well, well done, good and faithful servant, and you can come and enjoy the joy of your Lord. And then the unprofitable servant who has uh, dug and hidden the talent into the outer darkness, there will be whipping and gnashing of teeth. The servants are judged on whether he has used his talent. So this person who has buried his talent will be cast into the outer darkness and there he will be whipping and gnashing of teeth. And now some people say there is a third place, heaven and hell, and there is a place of gnashing of teeth. Now this is not biblical. There is no biblical support of that. That we are judged uh, w whether we can go to eternal life or eternal death or damnation. There is no third place. So this place is hell. And in the third parable is more clear because it says that it go into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. So Matthew 25, 4, uh, 34, this is the parable of the sheep and the goats. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. 41. Then he will also say to those on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. Then he will answer them, saying, Assuredly, I say to you, Inasmuch as you did not do it to one of this, the least of this, you did not do it to me. And this will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into everla eternal life. So here, uh, that when we do it to one of the least of this one, the least of uh, Jesus' brothers, you did it to Jesus. So when we feed the hungry to bring them to Jesus, uh, or to feed the, the hungry Christian, so we do good to the Christians, and we do good to the non-Christians to bring them to Jesus, then Jesus will say that you come and inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And then those who have not done this, they depart, they have to depart from Jesus into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and the angels. So it's very clear here that it's going to hell. So this is not, you know, there's no third place of uh, gnashing of teeth. This is the place of hell. That's everlasting fire because I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. And so this will go into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into ever eternal life. So this very clear passage that uh, uh, we are judged by our good works, which serves to prove that we have uh, eternal life, that we have a uh, relationship with God, then these people are judged by their good works. Okay, now so what does that message mean to us? What does that mean? What, what it means is that when we believe in Jesus, don't think that some people say, I just believe in Jesus. I don't do anything. I don't serve God. I don't do anything. I cannot serve God. But actually serving God can be just glorifying God, telling people about the goodness of Jesus, and praising God and be filled with joy. And then we just tell people how wonderful God is, and helping the church with different uh, work to reach out to people. And these are all good works. And also be uh, faithful to our marriage and love our, our spouse and love our children and, and uh, teach them the Word of God, bring them to Jesus. All this, God is very happy with us. But if a Christian, if a person says he's a Christian but he never changes his life, then he's not born again. Then on a day of judgment, he will be asked you know what you have done and then he'll go to God empty-handed and then he cannot have eternal life so it's very important that we understand that no one can enter heaven empty-handed no one can enter heaven empty-handed some people think they can go in heaven empty-handed now in Chinese in Hong Kong not all Chinese in Hong Kong we have an expression you know when we visit someone we usually bring some gifts 
and and this person says, "I only brought you two bunches of bananas." That means empty-handed. You know, these are the two bunches of banana. I brought you two bunches of uh, banana. So it's saying empty-handed. So if we go to God one day and say, "I brought you two bunches of banana," and Jesus will say. You have done nothing good for me, and you are a wicked and lazy servant. Depart from me. Go into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels, and it will be fearful. So, when we are saved, we don't just believe and stop there. Now, there, uh, justification by grace through faith is. The most important teaching in the Bible: we are justified, we are forgiven, declared righteous uh, by uh, grace through faith. It's by the grace of God, and then through our faith that we are saved. But this is not the only teaching in the Bible. The other teaching in the Bible is that faith is never alone. Faith always bears fruit. Faith without good works is dead. So when Some, someone says he has faith, but he doesn't change his life. Then he doesn't have; he's not born again. And if anyone is not born again, he doesn't have eternal life. So this is very important to understand that. And uh, so, if there are people now, we want to uh, if we want to preach about this passage, you know, and actually any of these pass uh, messages I preach, you can use it in your church. To preach to the people, to teach the people, and uh, but we want to motivate people with the grace of God. You know, God loves you, and Jesus died for you so that you can be forgiven. So you confess your sin, and then He will forgive you. And you trust in Jesus as your Savior; He'll forgive you and give you eternal life. It's a wonderful blessings. Do you want the blessings? When you really sincerely repent of our sin, when we sincerely repent of our sins, the Holy Spirit will come into our life, and then we become sensitive to our sins. When we sin, we feel guilty. We feel bad about our sins. That means the Holy Spirit is living in us, reminding us, and we know the Holy Spirit is God. Now, if a judge in our country summons you to the court. We have to go to the court to listen, you know, to respond to the to the summon. Now, if God calls us, He is more powerful than the judge. We cannot run away from God, so everyone has to go in front of God. So when God tells us that we are judged by our good works, we cannot just, you know, neglect the voice of the Holy Spirit. The voice of the Holy Spirit has the authority of God. Has the authority of God, so we need to respond to the voice of the Holy Spirit and say, "Lord, I'm sorry for my sins. Please forgive my sins. I'm sorry for my sins. I want to turn away from my sins." So, whenever anyone is born again, he will feel sorry for his sins, and then he will respond. Now, some people might say, "Well, it's too hard to overcome my sins. It's too hard to overcome my lust." Then they should, they need to learn. So, in order to overcome lust, they need to build up the relationship and this satisfaction with God. That they experience the peace and joy and love from God when they pray and they enjoy God. Thank you, Lord, Hallelujah! And they believe that they are precious. And then, when they sin, it would destroy their life. And then, when they obey God and and have a close relationship with God, then they are blessed by God. So, these are four motivation. First, God loves us very much. Number two, we are very precious in the sight of God. Number three, when we disobey God, there will be destruction. And then number four, when we obey God, there will be life eternal. So we remember these four motivation. So when we obey God, there's always uh, God is delight with us, and God will bless us. So and then we hear this voice, we want to respond to it. So when we have lust. Then we say this is destructive. If I continue, unless it would destroy my life, I want to trust in God as my Savior. I want to obey Him, and, and I want to have the joy of the Lord. And then the Lord will bless us. Now, some people, because of the sin, they they control by the temper, they control by lust, and what happens is they will lose the marriage and they will lose everything. If they live in sin, they can lose everything. But we, if we live in the presence of God, we if we love God all the time. 
then our whole life will be blessed. Our whole life will be blessed by God and then God will bless our whole life and then uh, at the end we'll receive more blessings from God uh, when we follow God. So um, the motivation, that I mean the strength, the source of strength, the motivation are the four I mentioned. And then the source of strength, first is from God and from the presence of God, from the Bible, from other Christians, that other Christians we can encourage each other, and from the teaching from the Bible, and from uh, learning how to handle our lust. Uh, that we know that when we have joy in the Lord, when we have strength from the Lord, that we enjoy our life and also uh, sins will destroy our life and when we obey God, God is pleased with us. So we have this strength from God and we pray much and then we'll have the motivation. So many people stay in lust because they think it's uh, unimportant. It's not so serious. But we need to know that is very, very uh, important. Uh, that any sins is very serious. It can destroy our life. And so uh, we all are saved by grace through faith. But no one should say, I'm saved by grace through faith and I go to heaven. I just say, I believe in you, therefore I come to heaven. So that evangelism method is wrong in that answer. Because we are saved by grace through faith. Yes. We're saved. How are you saved? We're saved when we believe in Jesus. But when we go to the judgment seat, when we enter heaven, God doesn't just ask us whether we believe in Jesus. God will ask us, how is your life? Has you lived out my life? Do I live in you? Do you have the Holy Spirit? Do you obey the Holy Spirit? And do you bear fruit? Okay, so uh, that evangelism method has some fault in it because people think uh, that you just believe and that's it and then you are you can enter heaven that's not true okay now now this is a big topic and we won't be able to finish this healing of the subconscious mind and bad dreams and uh, we will f do part of it and finish it next time now, what is the subconscious mind? Now, uh, understanding the you know the healing of the subconscious mind is um, it's helpful to us to understand our inner life. When we grow up from our infancy, when we grow up, our family affects us greatly. If we grow up in love that our parents love us, care about us, and encourage us all the time, then we have peace and joy and love and satisfaction in our life. And then we believe in Jesus, and then we have uh, joy from the Lord, strength from the Lord. But many people don't grow up like that. They grow up being yelled at by, the, by other people. Other people mistreat them. They feel bad about themselves when they do something bad, they are yell at and they, they feel very bad. Even when they do something good, other people don't appreciate them. And, and they just say, you haven't done other things good. So very often people have hurt experience, hurtful experiences that stay in their life and it will affect the whole life. It, it will sink in their life, in their subconscious mind that they remember that they are not loved by people, that they are not, then they become unhappy. And then in their dreams, they would have unpleasant experiences. They would be, you know, maybe being chased by other people, being hurt by other people, or running away from other people, uh, or crying in their dreams. And uh, so this subconscious mind needs to be healed and this is a process, so we need to start working on it. And next time we'll continue to talk about it. Okay, understanding our subconscious mind. All our experiences will stay in our subconscious mind. Now there's a conscious mind. Conscious mind is what we are aware of, what we have heard, what we have learned, 
uh, we know that God loves us this is in our mind our conscious mind but in our subconscious mind we might not feel loved it depends on each person some people they believe they are loved but they don't sense love in the heart they don't believe that they are loved and the outside they say God loves me but on the inside they say nobody loves me even God doesn't love me okay that's what they say but that's not true now all our experiences will stay in our subconscious mind if a person grows up in the love of God and of people and grows up happily his subconscious mind will be more healthy if a person has experienced this often if he experience criticism rejection attack and comparison with other people he will have much fear much loneliness worry and guilt in his subconscious mind so if a person grow up in fear in anger in frustration then his subconscious mind will be filled with these negative feelings and in a subconscious mind we mo mainly remember the feelings generally it's the feeling that it will show up in our life that some people they get unhappy easily that they feel burdened they feel people are criticizing them so some people you know continue uh, to live in this negative subconscious mind and they inside them there is unhappiness and then people who have subcon subconscious problems he will have this science he will be hurt by people easily even when people say something just a suggestion uh, can you please do this uh, can you please uh, uh, be more punctual he would say how oh, he doesn't like me he doesn't like me because he has been hurt by people criticized by people many times and then anytime people give him a suggestion he'll be easily hurt and then B he will have negative thinking he will say nobody likes me I'm useless I, uh, 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 nobody loves me see he will suspect people easily he will say uh, he doesn't have a uh, he doesn't like me he he wants to do something bad to me so they have they will suspect people easily and they cannot accept suggestions when people suggest something to them they cannot accept it they, they, they think people are attacking them and then they will defend themselves easily so if someone suggests something uh, can you uh, come more punctually then then he will say it's not me someone else someone else caused me to be late so it, they will defend themselves uh, we notice that some people when you try to talk to them about anything they will defend it I didn't do it I didn't do it someone else did it it's his fault it's your fault so some people have the habit of blaming people because they have been blamed by people a lot and then they are hard to believe in God's love it's very hard for them to believe in God's love and they have nightmares often they have nightmares being chased by people I have nightmares of fear of anger of frustration or e or being chased by demons so this uh, different kinds of nightmare it is a sign that he has subconscious problems our conscious mind is what we are aware of a person might have heard that God loves him and his life is precious so his conscious mind knows that God loves him and his life is precious but he might have been hurt by many people and he has hardly experienced any love then it is hard for his subconscious mind to believe that he's loved so he has heard that Jesus loves him but in his subconscious mind he has been hurt by many people he has been hurt by people all the time people don't like him his spouse doesn't like him his children don't like him and when people don't like him he doesn't like them either you know usually people who are not liked by people they also don't like people so they they think life is terrible the world is terrible God is even they will say God is terrible because they all the experiences are negative and then inside them the subconscious mind is very negative 
And most people are more controlled by their subconscious mind than by their conscious mind. And that if they have grown up in frustration and accusation, even though they have heard God's love, they have studied the Bible, they still, it's still hard to have this teaching sing to his subconscious mind. It takes time and we need to have ways to handle it, to, uh, to heal, to bring healing to our subconscious mind. So most people are more controlled by the subconscious mind. And it's very easy to see. When you see people, they're easily offended, they get angry easily, they, uh, they're very negative, they suspect people, they don't believe in God's love, they, uh, they, it's hard for them to relate to people, they, they don't like people, they don't look at people. All these are signs of unhealthy subconscious mind. It, it's quite easy to detect that, but everyone has some degree of subconscious mind problem. Only when we go to heaven that our subconscious mind is totally healthy. In this life, we all have some degree of subconscious mind sickness in us. So first step is we become aware of this defensiveness in us, this negative tendency in us, this negative emotions in us. They are caused by the subconscious mind. Although many Christians believe that they should rejoice in God. They don't because they are not joyful inside. Inside them, they're not joyful. Many Christians believe that they should love, but they don't because they don't feel loved. So we need to heal, bring healing to our subconscious mind before we can rejoice in the Lord, before we can love people and bless people. So. It's important to bring healing to our subconscious mind and to the subconscious mind on our, of our members and our, f our family members, especially you know, our family members, because when we bring healing to them, then there will be more joy in the family. Now the husband and wife relationship, very often uh, you know, they mistreat each other, they don't talk to each other that much or they yell at each other, and then what happened is from the marriage alone, there is a lot of negative subconscious mind uh, problem inside because they've seen that the spouse doesn't talk to them, the spouse doesn't care about them, the, the spouse nagging, is nagging too much, the spouse re uh, demands too much. So when they see the spouse, they feel unhappy. That is because they already have this negative feeling inside them that they feel very negative about the spouse. So let us think about our life. It's not just about our, what we believe in the head, but it's what we feel in the heart, that we need to change this inner feeling, the subconscious mind inside us. Okay. How to bring healing to our subconscious mind? First, now we need to have uh, first the healing, uh, the inner healing first, inner healing, and then the inner healing, and then the next step is to heal our subconscious mind. So first, believe in God's love and His self worth. So believe in God's love and our self worth. Isaiah 49 15 can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb surely they may forget yet I will not forget you so God always remembers and bless to bless us so we always think about God loves me I'm loved by God God remembers me so we let this sink in our life God is loving me right now God is happy with me God is thinking of me now God cannot forget me God is caring for me now. God wants to bless me. God has a plan to bless me. So we need to declare these Bible verses to us all the time and let it sink in our heart. I'm loved by God and I can enjoy God. God is loving me now. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I can be excited about God's love. I can be excited about His love. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He is loving me right now. I can be happy of His love. I'm, I'm happy with Him. 
He's so wonderful. He's so wonderful. Hallelujah. So we want to believe in God's love and let it sink in our in our subconscious mind. Psalm 139, 16 to 17. And in your book they all were written, all the days, the days fashioned for me, when as yet there were none of them. How precious also are your thoughts to me, O God. So all the days of our life have been written in the book of life already in heaven. It's have all been written for me. God has a wonderful plan. If I love God and obey God, I will enter this plan. Now we won't enter this plan automatically. Only when we when we follow Romans 12, 1 to 2, when we dedicate our body as a living sacrifice, offer our body as a living sacrifice, and do not be conformed to the world and be transformed by the renewal of our mind, then we can discern the good and uh, pleasing will, uh, perfect pleasing will of God. So, so we declare, oh, God has a wonderful plan. My life is precious. And when I love God, I will enter that wonderful plan. The plan will come true. The plan will come true. And I will, uh, when I follow God and obey God, my life will become higher and higher. And I'm precious, I'm important. So this is important to heal our image, our self-image. When we love God, then we can have a healthy self-image. Okay, and then the person might feel despised, believe that God treasures us and regards us as precious. God plans a wonderful life for everyone. So we might feel despised, but we believe in God's promises. He loves me, He remembers me, He never forgets me, forgets about me, He uh, and He has written my life into His book, so I'm very precious in His sight. So let this love sink in our heart so that we we are convinced of God's love for us. And then believe that people cannot take away our blessings and God can restore what we lost. So nobody can take away God's blessing. God will restore everything people have tried to steal from us that God will restore to us. So we don't have to be afraid of people. Matthew 6.33 But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things will be added to you. So when we seek his kingdom. That means we want more people saved. We bring people to, be, to salvation. We pray for salvation of people. And also we s seek God to be our king. Where God is the king, there is his kingdom. So we let God to be our king in our heart. We let God to be our king. That is seeking his kingdom in our hearts. So seeking the kingdom has two meanings. One is to bring people into his kingdom. Second is to let God be the king in our hearts and in our life, in our, uh, our church, in everywhere we go. And His righteousness, His righteousness means obedience, that when, when we obey God, then we are following His righteousness. Then we are living out His righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. Then God will give us back so nobody can steal from us. And 1 Corinthians 2 9, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man that things which God has prepared for those who love Him. So God has prepared great things that we cannot imagine, the things we never imagined. If we love God, God will prepare all these things for me. So I know that nobody can steal this thing from me. Even when people mistreat me, even when people hurt me, it doesn't matter. They won't be able to steal from us. Now there are people in the world, even Christians, who have the habit of yelling at people, hurting people, criticizing people. We don't have to take that seriously. We don't have to take that seriously. We don't have to say, well, he hurt me. I feel very hurt now. We might feel hurt, but we want to handle that. We want to say, even if he hurts me, it won't take anything away from me, so I don't have to take it seriously. Even when someone yells at me, if I have done something wrong, I'll ask him to forgive me. If I have not done anything wrong, I will say, it doesn't matter. It uh, he won't be able to steal anything from me and God will reward me, God will repay me and I want to pray for this person to bless this person. Now for some people it's very hard but think about this, if we are angry with this person we lose more. This person yells at us and then we are angry 
when we sin, when we are angry, we lose more. We lose the joy of the Lord, we lose a good relationship with God. So we want to say, it doesn't matter what they say to me. What they say to me, if it's a sinful way, I use a word to say, this is garbage. We don't want to eat the garbage. When they say something negative to me, that is his problem. I don't have to eat it. I don't have to take it seriously. Uh, if he yells at me and say, you're useless, it will say, God uses me. I don't have to be bothered by him. Even if I've done, I've done something wrong, God will forgive me and God will give me a chance to restore what I've lost. And uh, God will give my life back. I will do better and better. So when we love God and obey God, He will restore to us what people have taken away. Even when the spouse has taken away something, even when the spouse divorces us, he, it seems that he has taken away something. But when we obey God and love God, God will restore to us and give us back. Okay? So now it's time. And so what we want to do, uh, when you go home, how do you handle your... Uh, your subconscious mind. I'm, I will say briefly, and then you will uh, try to handle it. I will say briefly how to how to bring healing to our subconscious mind. First, we need to heal our conscious mind in order to heal the subconscious mind. So we need to heal our beliefs. We need to heal our feelings. We need to heal. You know the external part of us and our thinking you know I uh, start to believe that God loves me I'm important that we declare this many times God loves me I'm very important and then we praise God for the presence of God we love God and then the presence of God will come stronger thank you Lord hallelujah thank you Lord you're loving me and in the prayer declare God's love God is loving me God is loving me God is taking care of me God blesses me God is happy when I love him I, I, I can be very happy about God God is happy about me thank you Lord you're happy about me so we declare this and we praise God and love God and then God's love will come stay in us more and then we'll be more peaceful and calm and then when we notice any negative things come up, for instance, we are e easily hurt by people. We ask ourselves, why am I easily hurt by people? Why am I easily offended by people? Because I take the words too seriously. Because I think we are too lowly. We are, we are, we are no use. So we think that they can you know, despise us and really step on us and we become useless. We don't have to think that way. They, we don't become useless. So we have to handle why we are easily affected by people. Why do I get angry easily? We have to find out the reason that sometimes because we feel very weak inside, we feel very insecure inside. We, we, we are, you know, we feel insecure and useless. So when people say anything, we take it very seriously because our subconscious mind is full of hurts in the past. So we want to say, it doesn't matter. God restored to me. And then we can pray to go back to this hurtful experiences and believe that God is right there because God is omnipresent. He's present everywhere. So I believe that when I was hurt by people, God was with me and God wants to heal me. God has a plan to heal me so I can put down these things and God already has a plan to heal me. And now I have Jesus Christ, I have the Holy Spirit, I have the, uh, the way to for healing so I can bring healing to myself. So if we bring healing to our subconscious mind, to our self-image, to our feelings, to our thinking. When more of this is corrected by God, then we feel more peaceful. And when we are more peaceful throughout the day, especially before sleep, because before sleep, our feelings will sink to our subconscious mind. When we sleep, when we are about to sleep, our feelings inside will sink into our subconscious mind. If we are peaceful all day long, we are happy all day long, we are thankful to God and we are thankful to people and we enjoy people. So it's very important to enjoy people, enjoy our spouse, enjoy our children, enjoy our parents. And when we enjoy people, we have more joy, we enjoy God, 
we have more joy and we before we sleep we enjoy God thank you Lord you're blessing me I enjoy you I like you I delight in you it's so good to be to be your child oh, so wonderful thank you Lord Jesus I love you I treasure you so we enjoy God and then when we sleep it will sink to our subconscious mind day by day and then next time in two weeks time when I come back you can tell me how your subconscious mind is do you feel more peaceful inside do you feel more happy do you feel find yourself not so easily offended do you find that you're more peaceful in your sleep now it's very important to uh, to find ways to have a good sleep for instance to have exercise in the daytime uh, to do work is good exercise and then uh, before we sleep we don't want to be too busy we don't want to be reading messages all the time we want to relax and pray to God for peace and comfort and then we go to sleep and believe that God is loving me and when we sleep when we are lying on the bed we'll say God is loving me God is blessing me God is with me hallelujah praise the Lord praise the Lord God is with me and then fall asleep that way we will be more peaceful and uh, the uh, peace and the love and the joy will sink to our subconscious mind we'll find that we'll have better dreams and better sleep uh, next time I'll talk about sleep and dreams too related to subconscious mind how you know if we find that we have many bad dreams it means that uh, especially if we have been angry we find that when we fall asleep very soon we'll have bad dreams that means something is bothering us and God has tailor-made our sleep pattern so that we uh, start to bring healing to the uh, to our subconscious mind but if a person is continually hurt then it's hard to bring healing just by sleeping but when we have you know uh, peaceful mind and then we sleep peacefully and then we'll have less and less bad dreams we'll be more 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 peaceful and and also uh, take care of our uh, tendency to be hurt easily by people to be to be insecure to have low self-image any any of this problem we notice it came from the subconscious mind people who think that they're useless it came from the subconscious mind because people have told them you're useless you cannot do anything good then we, we are affected in our subconscious mind but we continue to say yes I have done this and God first God treasures me I've done this for God and God is happy with me so I can be happy with myself and uh, God is using me God is raising my life up so we believe more and more God treasures me God is raising my life up and then we feel more and more happy about ourselves and health have healthier self-image so work on that and in two weeks time when we come back and in this two weeks time too you can send me messages and tell me how you have been uh, using this method to handle your subconscious mind to bring healing to yourself so that you're more peaceful with, with yourself that, that you sleep better as the as the Bible says the Lord will cause those who love him to sleep better okay God bless you and we'll close to the prayer thank you Lord Jesus you're a wonderful God you're a loving God when we live in your love then we are filled with joy and with strength and hope and with peace and we'll know that we are precious in your sight we are not someone useless we are we are useful in your kingdom you can use us greatly we are important in your sight and we can uh, uh, we can enjoy you we can enjoy life we can enjoy people we can enjoy being ourselves and we can bless people we can enjoy ministry thank you Lord you're so wonderful you're so wonderful we enjoy you